Hello, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning Black People with Morgan Reese. And I'm your amazing, fantastic host, Morgan Reese. And you guys see who I've got here? I got Tom Coverly. We're going to come back after we do this intro real quick. I'm going to let you know who this man is, what he's about. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get started right from there. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Right. Are they ready? <laughs> And I have the amazing Tom Coverly, the motivational speaker, the magic, the magician, the illusionist, and uh, the comedian. Uh, we're gonna tell you, gonna tell us where he's from, but they're also the man that's promoting kindness. Tom Coverly, welcome to Tom. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you for taking out the time. I uh, really scheduled to join my show. Morgan, I'm so excited. Me. You know it. Listen, East Coast, we gotta stick together. All day. And you see, I wore my jersey on purpose. I you know, love I it. it again yesterday. Five, baby, five. That's you it. Let's go, see. birds. Let's go, birds. Two, now, two, we, we just, we just had days. everybody else from every NFL team just tune off right now. <laughs> they're, they're, they're confused with this. They're like, how is this happening? What's going on? You know, they weren't supposed to do this the second year. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> unbelievable. We got, we got a praying quarterback. That's that? it. We do. Yeah, we do. So many people got a praying and quarterback quarter, like we did. Our quarterback trade last year was got to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, he didn't win, but he came back for a second round. So I think yeah, God, he yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just he didn't pray long enough for, before the Super Bowl. <laughs> he did. Believe it or not, I was praying too but during halftime. Me and my husband, he was like, "What you doing, baby?" I said, "Praying for us to win. I'm praying for us to win." <laughs> I love it. I love but it. I think my wife was praying right with you. Well, tell us more about you, uh, Tom. Where are you from? Um, and more about who you are. You are. I, I watch you. I follow you. You got a lot of amazing, positive things going on with you and your life and your wife and everything that you got going on. So, yeah, so let me start talking. Talk about you a little. No, I listen. I grew up in Camden, New Jersey, so right over the bridge from you. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so Camden. A lot of my story upbringing come comes from you know just childhood and. But I like to focus on the future, right? I like to focus on the here and now and what is going on and um, not always what made me the person I am because sometimes, you know, some of those things are areas in your life you look back on and you're like, you're glad it made you for who you are, but I'm so much more than everything back then, you know? And so excited for everything that God's been doing. I get a chance to use a comedy illusion show as a way of going into schools and speaking a message of hope with young people. I get a chance to talk about bullying, suicide prevention, mental health issues. Oftentimes, uh, we will do an evening family show. Now, that looks different depending on the venue, right? There's a lot of times we're invited right back to the school. And when we're invited back to the school, I'll do a full comedy magic show. And then we'll invite the parents, the community, everybody back at nighttime to be able to just hear a message that will kind of just bring unity to that community. Because we all know, right, it takes everybody together. It takes the teachers, the administrators, the school. It takes family. It takes the community to be able to impact our kids. And so that's why those nights are important when I do family nights at the school. Um, there's times where churches play a role in getting me out to the school. And I want to make it clear for anybody watching, I don't share my faith in the schools. Um, but in those cases where we partner with a church, we invite everybody back to the church. And, and then I can go into my faith story, right? I can basically, I'll do the full show, entertain, have a good time. And then at the end of the show, say, look, everything you just saw is an illusion, but let me share something that's real. Let me share how Jesus Christ has changed my life. And because obviously my faith plays the biggest role in my life, even though I don't get a chance to share that, uh, you know, on every platform that I might be on. Um, but that's what I get a chance to do. This last year, I got a chance to shoot a TV show. 
um, called Influenced. And so we just wrapped up season one, and that right now is in the hands of being pitched to major networks and streaming platforms. So fingers crossed and prayers um, to see what God does there. Well, I got a slogan on my show for this year. 2023 is all about me. So Tom, definitely 2023 is definitely about you. You are doing amazing things, sharing sharing what we really need as far as like um, kids bully, because I was one of those kids that was bullied when I was in school. Uh, so I know all about that. I know about mental health because I had that in my family that goes along with my parents and everything. So what made that be such of your strong passion as far as um, motivating and inspiring kids for the bullying side and the mental health side? Because sometimes we do it because it, it, we've had a personal impact to ourselves or it just hits our heart. So what drew, drew you to it? Yeah, I listen as a kid, I, I was bullied a lot. You know, I had... I had big old floppy ears. You know, I kind of grew into these babies right now, Morgan, a little bit. But um, the, these things were, were bigger than life, it seemed like anyway. You know, as a child, um, you know, as I got in middle school, had acne all over the place, um, super skinny, um, you know, and I, I, can't, I didn't have most of my closet consisted of hand-me-downs, you know, no name brand hand-me-downs. And so you take all of those different things. You know, I was a verbal punching bag for my bully. And so that has always stuck with me, right? I always had a heart for the down and out, or I always had a heart for most people um, that people gave up on, right? And then it wasn't until years later that I realized, man, I can really impact these kids right where they're at. Um, fast forward, um, I was a youth pastor for about a dozen years. And so when I was youth pastoring, the very first church that I was a part of, um, there was a student who, uh, he was a senior in high school, good looking kid, seemed like he had everything going for him. And, um, and he, he chose to give up on this gift of life, I'll put it that way. Um, and so that was one of the hardest things that I will never forget the rest of my life. Um, the, those images, um, it forever stuck with me. Um, and then I could never, Morgan, I could never relate to people who thought about giving up on life. You know, all my years of youth pastoring, I would listen to kids ready to give up. And honestly, I couldn't relate to that part. You know, I just always had a heart for it, but I couldn't personally relate because I never thought, you know, I enjoy life and I'm like, man, life is good. And then to be honest, um, about 20 years ago, I went through one of the hardest times of my, my entire life. And um, for the first time in my life, I contemplated uh, giving up and attempted twice. And so by the miracle and grace of God, I am here. Um, and I don't often share that. Um, you know, I, I don't share it in the schools even, but it is one of my biggest driving forces to why I speak about what I, what I do. And you know, by you saying it out loud, that was kind of mad right now because he's like, yeah. oh, he's supposed to write that to himself. He's supposed to share that with no one. But yeah. you got it. You got to. God takes us through tests on purpose for us to share because if yeah. we don't share our trials, our tribulations, our ups and our downs, you know, social media is really big on appearances. Oh, they look, their life is so this, and they're always so happy. Their relationships are so happy, but it's not always that facade. You know, some people put on that mask and yeah. people say, oh, well, we don't want them to know our business. But it's not about sharing all of your business. It's about sharing things that we know we can help others with. Like as I told you, I'm an author. I'm a life speaker as well, along with the podcast host. So my book is about sharing my journey of my life so I can help someone else. And by you doing it and freeing yourself of that, you don't even know who you just saved. Yeah. yeah listen, you that's, know. yeah, you, you are so right on. And it's one of those things. There are people that are tuning in right now that might feel like giving up and, obviously I'm glad that I'm here. Right. It, it just, that's why I get a chance to destroy the illusions and lies that we're all believing. Right. It don't matter if it's a middle school kid, el uh, high school kid, upper elementary school kid, we all, or an adult, we all believe illusions about life. We all have go through hard times. We all get to a point sometimes where 
we feel lonely, right? We can have a great support system around us. And sometimes it's like, yeah, would anybody really care if I was gone? Like, would anybody miss me if I was gone? Right. That's an illusion, a lie, you know, and we'll say it straight on this podcast because, you know, I know where your heart's at with God. Um, but that's a straight lie right from the enemy, the master deceiver, the biggest liar that ever existed, the father of lies, the Bible calls him the devil. And he will lie to us and tell us that we have no purpose. Nobody would miss us. They're illusions and lies. And truth and reality is there are people that need to hear this right now. You do have a purpose. God has designed that purpose for you. And I'm telling you, just because it doesn't seem like it's right in front of you right now, it is in front of you. That is fact. That is reality. Just a matter of you colliding with God's purpose. And then people would miss you. People care about you. I'm sure there is a, a mom, a dad, a grandma, a grandpa, an aunt, an uncle, brother, sister, son, daughter. There is someone in your life, even if it feels like you have no friends at all. I'm telling you, there is someone that would miss you. And so that's a lie that we believe. Nah, no one would care if I was gone. No, there's a lot of people. Morgan, I've never done an event where there was a, uh, a suicide in a school and I did an evening show where there wasn't a lineup of people talking about how incredible that person was. You know, wow. there's always, even kids who seem like they had no friends and I'm there and there are people that stand up and say, man, if only they knew how much I cared, if they only knew how much I loved them. That's every case, every single time there's people that care about us and love us. So but as you said, it's your enemy. He puts those negative thoughts in our mind because I was one of those people too. I tried to take my life um, yeah. along with other people, my family or friends that I knew of, family members who tried to take my life. Um, my ex-husband did. So as I grew up, I tried to do it myself. I remember when I was about 13, 14 years old and I walked in front of a car for the car yeah. to hit me. And the car hit me, but it didn't do anything. And I was like, dang, I guess maybe I am supposed to be here. And yeah. here I am. I just turned 50. I'm still here. So we're here for a purpose. But sometimes when the enemy gets in your head and you got a lot of negativity was already going on in your mind. And sometimes it's not even always their family because you never know how their family treat them. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, I didn't have great family ties. I didn't have great family support. But I also learned in my life that God always gave me people who were like my family. They yeah. were not my mother. They were not my father. They were not my grandparents and my aunts and my cousins. But he gives those people to you. But sometimes when you don't, you're not thinking about that because you're so thinking, nobody loves me. Nobody yeah. cares about me. And for people to come to you on the show and say, they don't know how much we care about them. Maybe they didn't. They probably don't know because they probably haven't had that broken down that, that whatever that cloud that was around them. They're thinking, oh, you saying that, but you don't mean it. You don't know what my heart going through. You don't mm. know what my head is going through. Mm. What is being said to me. So by them coming to you on your show and they're telling you, well, I don't know why they think like that. They need to go to them and say, hey, why do you feel like that? Why do you think that? Yeah. What am I missing? Because some people that. are busy living their own lives and they have time they don't even know what they're missing. Mm -hmm. make that's so think, good. Maybe I, that's why I had to do this because you may see me and you may think that I'm like this, but you don't really see me that's for me it. to say this out loud. And, you know, some people say, oh, they're just faking it or they just want attention. And sometimes it's not always about attention. It's just that they need someone just to listen. That's it. You know, get That's a, it. Get a show them and just let them be free to, to speak their mind. Yeah. Yo, you are so right on. Listen, we all have different people in our life, right? You mentioned there's people that step up, whether they're friends and they become your family, right? I came from a supportive um, family, you know, Always have my mom and dad always showing unconditional love, right? My brothers. Um, and yet I still believe that illusion and lie, right? There was nobody there. And so we, we all get to that. I tell people all the time when they ask, you know, what can I say to someone, a friend, a family member who's ready to give up? And you said it. Listen, listen. And if we listen, I guarantee it, they will start speaking illusions and lies that they're believing out loud. And all you have to do is after you're done listening, if you do want to give advice, sometimes just listen. But if you feel like the need to give some advice, just remind them of some truth and reality. Listen to that lie. Replace it with truth. God's truth to who they are. 
because we're as I, this last two weeks, it was a lot of death that I knew of. I had a family member who just passed. I knew of someone else who lost a family member. Um, I lost a loved one due mm, to them sorry. in their own life. And it was so devastating to them. And um, I do a thing on my, my other side called Moments with Morgan. It's about grief. How do you get clarity while you're grieving loss? Whether mm. it's a loss of a member, a loss of a job, a relationship, or a marriage. And a lot of people, when they're going through those things, and they just, and unfortunately, they don't hold on and don't have that enough strength to, to save their own life or find out how they can get their lives saved, we always have that question of why. Yeah. You know, why do they do this? Or what was so so wrong with their life that they had to go this direction and this path? And Sometimes we, we we have those questions, but then you have to worry about you saved, you got saved, you survived. Like as you said, yeah. you survived, you still here. Like I said, I'm survived, I'm still here. So those people who think that that's, that's the only route they, they have, it's not. Because if we survive and we tried the same thing and we know other people have probably done the same thing, it's the purpose for you to still be here. That's because right. Because was a perfect example. A lot of people were taken. A lot of people were taken. But think about the other million of billions of people that's still here. Yeah. Still a lot. Yep. yep. So you think we gotta think about that. We gotta flip, flip the script a little bit and say it's a purpose for you to be here. It's a purpose for all of us. We just gotta yeah. figure out what that purpose is. That's it. That's it. I love it. Great truth right there. <laughs> so you know, and I'm watching you on your shows and and I, I noticed you do a lot of things with kindness. And you do a lot of things with for the children. Um, that's a lot because a lot of our kids are not protected. A lot of mm -hmm. our kids are not supported like they, they think they should be. And, you know, we both come from up north. Kids are cruel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Kids are cruel, especially up north kids. They are brutal. They're worse than adults sometimes. And yeah. it, even when you're an adult, they pay kids can say some really mean, uh, harmful and nasty things to to another adult, they see them a certain yeah. way, and they be disrespectful and say anything out their mouth. So, with you dealing with those type of kids and those type of people, how do you flip the script so where they can really hear? They see you because they're like, "Oh, I'm currently he's an amazing guy. He's doing this. He's doing that." How do you really truly get their attention? Now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I always tell people the moment you walk on stage in front of kids, whether that's elementary, middle school or high school, or even I'll do college events. The moment you walk on stage, you have seconds to grab their attention, whether they're going to listen to you or turn you off. Um, so years ago, um, it was actually a friend of mine's idea to take my love for speaking and to mix it together with a hobby at the time was doing comedy and magic. And so he said, have you ever thought about combining the two together? And to be honest, Morgan, I told him that was the corniest idea I've ever heard. You know, I'm like, nah, that will never fly. That won't work. And he said, man, you asked. I think to, you should put together a website, start with your connections around the country and just watch what God does. And this is patting God on the back. I take zero credit. In that very first year, I was in 38 states speaking and performing. God just exploded the doors wide open. So you ask, what do I do to get their attention? It is amazing what laughter will do. We have all heard the saying, right? Laughter is the best medicine. And it truly is, right? You could be going through the roughest time. You may not feel like laughing. But there's something about that. It just feels good to let a laugh out loud, you know? And so when you come in and I'm using laughter, I'm using comedy, I'm using their friends as participants up on stage and they're seeing that interaction and I'm blowing their minds with a magic trick. It's amazing how that just breaks down the hardest of hearts. Um, I don't have to tell you much even about... Um, Atlantic City, right? There's a friend of mine that brought me into Atlantic City schools. And he's like, look, if if you could do well in Atlantic City schools, you could do anywhere in the whole country. And uh, just because they're a rough group, right? And it just, uh, I like I said, it's, it's my heart. It's my passion um, for the people that seem rough around the edges or people that most people give up on. 
Um, they don't see much purpose in their life. And I'm thinking now nah, they're, they're the people that are going to change this world, man. They're the people that I truly believe because they come from maybe some humble beginnings. It's amazing how I've watched other kids just use that to explode and make a difference in other people's lives. You know, I, I look at simply the, the person that shared Jesus with me, you know, as a, as a middle school kid. You know, I was invited out to church for the first time, never been to church before in my whole life. And I leaned next to this kid next to me as the pastor was talking because the pastor said, Jesus Christ. And I leaned next to him and I said, listen, I don't know anything about church, but you can't swear in church. You can't curse. He just said, Jesus Christ. And that kid starts laughing. And he's like, that's not a curse word. That's God's son. And I go, God, as a kid, like this blew my mind. And I just wanted to know more, right? And so long story short, I'll never forget just surrendering my life to God there as a middle school student. And that just forever changed my life, right? And so there's people that gave up on me and thought, you know, ah, he's a troublemaker. Yeah, he's up to no good. Um and, but God had other plans. So don't give up on the troublemakers. Don't give up. I even taught in a Christian school one year. And, you know, I, I think like most private schools, they want to, you know, try to keep a tight ship, right? And so, hey, there's people that are paying to be here in this school. So you buy by these lines or you're gone, right? And I remember just going to bat for many kids um, that were up to no good. I'm like, what happens in this world is, we give up on those kids instead of pouring into them more. You know, we just go, all right, you're off. You're over here now. We'll put you in this system over here. We'll put you over here. And we give up on these kids and instead of mentoring them. And there were a few kids I really went to bat for. And I look back now and I'm like, man, their life, they're close with God. They're serving God. They're doing big things. If everybody just gives up on people, we're going to find them behind bars. We're going to find them up to no good. Um, so we, we got to continue to pour into people. You said it, you said a mouthful Tom. You're right. Um, a lot of people don't have patience anymore. Um, use my, perfect, my, my favorite scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs three, five, yeah. you trusted in him when you went to the middle school and you gave your life to the Lord. You trusted in him when you became a youth pastor, you didn't see that you being to the, as a youth pastor, you trusted in him with your current gifts now, your current work now to still continue to let him use you to, to reach others. So we all have a gift to do that. It's just yeah. that we don't always trust in the process. You know, we, we don't see, we see with our naked eye, like, God, you said you was going to do this. Yeah. Even me, even where I'm like, God, I know what you said you got for me. But right now, I don't see it. And he's like, don't worry about it, my child. I got you. And I'm yeah. like, okay, Lord, well, you know, I wasn't seeing you here. But, you know, <laughs> so we, we forget to really just trust in him. We trust in our parents sometimes. We trust in work sometimes. We trust in other people. But we sometimes forget to trust in him. That's it. And yeah. because you decided to trust in him, gave you that platform that those kids are allowed to trust you. Yeah. It's not really you that trust in. They're trusting the God in you. Yeah. They trust in the lighting. Mm, that's so good. I you brought up a good point about trust and just honestly just trusting God, right? Um, there are a lot of adults still looking for their purpose in life. And I just want to encourage those that are watching, like, what is it that God put in your hand? You know, you think back to Moses and when God asked Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? Let me just tell you, God don't ask questions because he don't know the answer. God already knew the answer. He already knew there was a staff, a rod in his hand. And he's like, what's in your hand? And he's like, it's a staff, right? And I think God asked him that because he wanted him to realize two things. One, his identity, right? His identity um, was he was a shepherd. That's what he was. He was a simple shepherd. And his influence was over stupid sheep, right? And he's like... That staff represents who you are. And what did he say to Moses? Moses, if you will just throw it on the ground, watch, I will do things that will blow your mind. And he did, right? And, and I just love that because then God was like, Moses, I want you to go and I want you to go speak to people. 
And Moses had every excuse in the book. Um, I'm not a really good speaker. I stutter over my words. Um, he had every, you know, now all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I like the sheep thing, right? I don't want to go speak in front of people. And so God is like, Moses, if you would just trust me, trust me, I will do things that will blow you away. And that's what I think of even years ago after I was youth pastoring for so long and then I transitioned into the last, it'll, this January will be 17 years I've been doing what I'm doing now, traveling around the country speaking. And that's all glory to God. And I look back on that and it was because of stepping out and just trusting God where my buddy had the idea to take my speaking, you know, and the only speaking I did at that point was with my Bible, right? So Bible, and I had a hobby doing magic tricks, right? So a deck of cards. I had a Bible and a deck of cards. And yeah. God just said, Tom, if you would just lay them at my feet, watch what I will do. And that's where I look back and I'm like, God, only you could get me into 38 states in year number one and continue that. And so I want to encourage those that are watching, what is in your hand? Just like God asked Moses what's in his hand, I want to ask you what's in your hand. For me, it was a Bible, deck of cards. What is it for you? And then ask God, God, you gave me this love for people. God, you gave me this love for this um, hobby of mine. You gave me a love for whatever it is. You're good at that and you're great at that, not just because you're great, you're great at that because God made you great at that. We all have different gifts and abilities. You're an author, my wife's an author. I can't write to save my life, all right? I don't like writing. I've been writing a book for over 12 years, the same book, because I don't like writing. So what's in your hand? We all have gifts and abilities. So lay them at God's feet. Mm. Well, you just said you have, you have, you've been writing for 12 years. I held on to my book for about 10 or 11 years. It didn't get published in December 16, 2020. Yeah. I lost the book because of the content. And I actually had the book even got produced or birthed was I was instructed to do it as part of my healing. And I'm like, write a book. I don't want to write no book. I don't want to do this. Um, I, I, and I started writing. I never even seen it. It was going to even be published better yet out for anyone to even know what it was about. Mm. So don't give up. Yeah. Don't let it go. No. So when I say trust in the Lord with all your heart, I seen your story with you about your wife. Yeah. And I felt your heart. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you and your wife to trust in the Lord with all your heart. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a hard few days, so I, I appreciate that. You know, um, none of us know why things happen, and we always have that question again: Why? Yeah. Why me? Why her? Why us? What is the purpose? Right now, you guys are going to have to just trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's it. That's it. And that's all we can do right now. Our <laughs> eyes are on him going, God, we don't understand it. We don't get it. But we're going to stay focused on you. Right. And, and just trust him. That's it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day. Well, is there anything that you would like to share with the world? Something that's something that's that's going to stick with them, something that's impactful, um, that they'll be like, wow, I could take that and I could take that in my next chapter, my next journey of my yeah. life. This new yeah. season. Yeah, you know, we're, absolutely. Last September, we're in October now. We're almost to the end of the year. God is not through with us. 2023 has not came to an end yet. Things are yeah. still going to happen. Is there yeah. anything you would like to share with the world that can inspire them and motivate them to, to help them go to the next level? Because as we see, there's a lot of hurt people in this world right now. There's mm -hmm. a lot of hate going on in this world. People don't want to get along with nobody. People are, one race is fighting against the other race. Or you sometimes you're fighting against each other in your own race. And there's a lot of nasty negative politics that's going on. Anything you would like to share? Yeah, let me let me just put it this way. I my favorite comedy comedy hero of all time is no longer with us, Mr. Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. And I miss Robin Williams, right? And that guy was so good at hiding behind his smile. He was so good at hiding behind the laughter. And yet, you know, without digging into his story, right? There were a lot of health issues there, but bottom line is there was a guy that was struggling with his mental health. And I just wanna encourage people that there are people around us every single day that are struggling. 
You know, if we had time, I say it during my shows, Morgan, if I had time to take the microphone and pass it around to every single person at the event and saying, you have 20 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute to share your story, share what's really going on with your life, right? Because we're so good at putting on these masks, share what's really going on in your life. I guarantee it, it would change the way that we treat one another. I look and at my show, there are people from all different backgrounds. There are people watching this podcast right now that are all different backgrounds. There are people, we're talking about our faith in God and there's people watching this podcast that don't even believe in God. There are people watching this um, podcast going, good morning, black people, good morning, white people. We don't know, good morning, everybody, right? It just We have people with different beliefs, with different backgrounds, we look different. And I watch during a comedy show and people during a comedy show will laugh and they're leaning over laughing with complete strangers that look different, have different beliefs, everything together. And then they walk out the door and what happens to that unity? That is something that is just a huge mission of mine to be able to spread a message of kindness. Because even those watching this podcast, I, wanna, I want to give a challenge that's not just faith-based. Because I want every single person to realize our faith might play a major role in who we are as people, but we also will be real. There, we have atheist friends or people that don't believe in God or have totally different beliefs that are some of the kindest people that I know on the face of the earth. So I want to encourage everybody that every single day you rub shoulders with people. And I want to encourage you to take three seconds with your eyeballs to look around every room that you walk into. That's my challenge. Because when you take three seconds to look around every room, I guarantee that's all that it takes is to look around and see someone that's lonely, someone that's hurting, someone that needs a compliment, a kind word, a hug when it's appropriate, goes a long way in changing someone's outlook in life. You never know the impact you will have in someone's life when you just take a moment. I challenge you, even if you're at the gas station pump, you're pumping gas and there's someone on the other side, ask them how they're doing. And then they will say the typical answer, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm all right. And then ask them this follow-up question. Hey, can I ask you, how are you really doing? If you ask that follow-up question, you will be amazed at how many complete strangers will open up to you and share their heart. And you don't have to have the answers. Don't fear having the answers. Just listen. Because that's all we all want at the end of the day, right? We want someone to listen to us. We want someone to care for us. And when you genuinely listen to a complete stranger or maybe someone in your neighborhood, someone you work with, someone you go to school with, it will change their outlook on life. Because we both just shared our stories that there are times in our life we felt like giving up. And you never know who those people are that are hiding behind the smile. They're laughing with you, but yet they feel like giving up. Wow. Tom, <laughs> you said a mouthful right there. God knows. 2023 is definitely all about you. I promise you, you said a mouthful. Um, my prayers for you and your family right now. Thank during you. this time that you're dealing with right now. I promise you, God got y'all. God got your back. Um, you really said a mouthful right there. And that's it. We see so many strangers in the street. We walk by homeless people and we never take the time to listen to them, to hear them. Mm -hmm. And you said that, a mouthful. So guys, again, how can we find you on um, time on your uh, social media platforms? What is your, how do we see you? How do we look for you? Do you have any upcoming shows going, coming up now? What you got going on in your, in your chapter right now? Yeah, so I have a couple shows actually coming out your way. Um, I'm doing a show up in Pottstown, PA. I'm doing a show um, just a little bit east of there, about a half hour or so east of there. I can't think of the name of the town right now. It's a magic theater. And then in Pottstown, it's at Soul Joel's up there. Um, awesome comedy venue. Um, so that's the couple shows that are coming out on the East Coast, but their whole rest of my tour schedule, if they go to TomCoverly.com, it'll have everything. It'll have a link to faith-based events, corporate events, um, school events, whatever they would like. If they're looking for a speaker, um, 
or some entertainment. So that's where they can find me. Well, Tom, again, thank you for taking out the time out of your busy schedule to come on my show. It's been definitely been a true honor. I promise you more than you know. Oh, <laughs> and I, I definitely it. would like for you to come back at a later time. I would love for you to come back if you have time. I know you're so busy. Um, guys, Tom Coverley. Thank He's you. A magician. Thank He's you. He's an illusionist. He's going to be an author soon, guys. I was, I'm going to put it out to the atmosphere. <laughs> I'm going to be what? An author yeah. soon. All right. I'm yeah. going to get right. You're going to be an author soon. So you might as well go ahead and put that out to the atmosphere. A comedian, but he's also a motivational speaker. Speaker. He's not just a motivational speaker. He's speaking to save lives, to help other people save their lives. Um, he's been down that path. He's he's known a little bit of that journey, and he has a kind heart. And you don't find too many people who have kind hearts these days. So please follow him wherever he's at. You see what the shirts say? Wake up, be kind, repeat. And that's Do me all, all day, over. every day. Everybody always say, girl, you always so bubbly. You always so energetically. I've been like this all my life, even when I was going through my trials and tribulations. And guess what? I am never going to change for nobody. <laughs> yeah. Keep being you. Love it. Yeah. So, Tom, thank you again for joining my show, guys. Again, this is Good Morning Black People, Morgan Reese. I'm your amazing and fantastic host, Morgan Reese, on this mag magnificent and marvelous Monday. You guys have a great, amazing week. Please stay safe. And be blessed. Yeah. Watch. <laughs>